And welcome to The Scumbag, episode four. It's a very special episode as we have officially become famous. We're actually famous people now. You are in the presence of celebrities versus before when you were just two dipshits, two microphones and one cup. We are above such big podcasts as the Racist Podcast, Racism Podcast, I think it is, Felix. Yes, the Racism Podcast is hosted by Steve Fuck and Ron Cum. Ah, Ron Cum. Uh, he's 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 a such a smart guy apart from the fact that he only uses racial slurs to speak which does actually require a great deal of intellect to do you have to know a lot of them i mean there <laughs> are a lot of them and they're in different languages so in a lot of ways he is a polyglot and i think that he's making some up though he said gas leopards the other day to refer to muslims i mean that's a new one i don't know if it'll catch on i don't know what does he call that i he, he doesn't really say like i said he just only speaks in conjoined racist terms so there you go that's welcome back to the scumbag where we are discussing a fictional racist podcast on one that really isn't racist it just we just hate everything yeah no like we're uh we're like those shirts that you see on t-shirthell.com that's like <laughs> racist uh an equal opportunity offender <laughs> we we are the share zone brought to life and at at dash at dash air zone with a zero on the zone. I don't know how you feel about it. I quite enjoy it. Uh I I think it's really good. I like it a lot. I'm not just saying that because my friends do it. Uh, I'm not just saying that because I want to avoid the backlash, and I don't want to be the guy screen cap for once with somebody putting the words "here's me" over it. Uh, I enjoy it. Yeah, I did that like eight times, so I'm the worst. I. I genuinely just consider death as well. That's also a good thing to do. And I really did a horrible thing as well with the share zone style things in that I, for some reason, had a reporter say, I will only accept a pitch in this form of the share zone. And I did it and I actually was successful. And I felt what little shame I had left die. Um, I don't know. Like, I, I don't know how far... I'll go before that dies for me. I, I still think I'm pretty, pretty well intentioned and uh, well, um, very principled content producer. But the moment that I start making stuff for BuzzFeed Saudi Arabia, we'll see. <laughs> BuzzFeed sounds, that actually sounds fantastic. I want to know the weird censored, like Z Frank doing stuff for the South Royal Family. I think I could see it. Like uh, he, these, these uh, Jurassic Park gifts explain why the apostates in Yemen must be dealt with. Dear kitten, I went to Yemen today. <laughs> uh, in, ele- in eleven seconds, Mohammed bin Salman destroys Shia, who thinks he deserves to live. <laughs> oh God! How do we always go into the Souths? And we admit that we had some connection difficulties, so we lost an amazing thing that I discussed with Felix of great shame of. So, of course, we were recording this the night after the historic moment in which Britain shat its pants and decided, fuck it, we're leaving the EU. We're just going. And I, of course, found out in a Benny Hanna ripoff called Hanna. I still can't believe how lazy the copyright theft is there. They just, like, took half the name. (laughs) And the great part is, as well, is I wonder if it's like a hidden fortress because it's at the end of a dry, like, a really long, empty road. There's just this restaurant. So I wonder if they look for anyone vaguely lawyerish and just gun them down, throw them yeah, in the no, bay. They, they, that's, that's their defense. They use a fortress defense to keep out any lawsuits. But like, hey, actually, that's uh, Hana and Benny Hana. Those are both Japanese words. If you guys don't know, that means they're they're from Japan, a.k.a. Nippon, a.k.a. the rise of the, the land of the rising sun. Excuse me. Um and these words can mean totally different things, even if they sound the same. So Benny Hana might mean like meat restaurant, but Hana also just the word Hana could mean like honor or uh, Japan. It could be another word for Japan. So like we really don't know that they're doing copyright infringement because of the language differences. And if you say Benny Hana in the wrong wrong way, it actually means I'm Richard Dreyfus's son. <laughs> And if you say it in another way, it means soul cycle. Yeah, it's really, really amazing. The beautiful Japanese language. Yeah, no, it's odd. It's odd that they all 
connect to Ben Dreyfus, but that's it's just one of those things. Yeah. It's like the king that wrote the Japanese language down knew the knew about Ben Dreyfus in seven thousand BC. That would actually be that would actually be my favorite revelation in history if it turned out that Ben was actually not related to Richard Dreyfus, but was related way back to the very beginnings of Japan. Yeah, no, he is the last samurai. <laughs> Oh my god, we need to do it. We need to stop this before it becomes episode four, Ben Dreyfus. Epi- or episode four, we apologize for episode four. <laughs> We're sorry, everyone. Uh, but actually, Ben is, and he's, I like Ben, but he is what we are talking about today, which is professional Twitter users, engagement editors. I don't know what a fucking engagement editor is, and I'd love it if anyone could tell me. Please don't email me. I really don't care. But the people who. Their life is being on Twitter. I don't mean like me, and I'm sad enough as it is, but I mean the people whose literal job is like social media professional. Ben not being one of them because his goal is to get the articles clicked on, whatever, fine. But the people who are like, hashtag, 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 I don't understand them. I hate them. I don't really get it either. I don't get how it generates money. Like Twitter is a money losing venture. If you're using it for ads or if you're you're using that, just that, to promote your articles, Twitter is a money-making venture if you use it to exploit connections uh, so that um, website gurus give you money to harass journalists. So in an indirect way, it is a moneymaker, but not in the way that these people do it. Not at all. And not actually for the company itself, no, Twitter. No, Twitter loses like $50 billion a day. And I don't even know how. Like, I feel yeah. like I could make Twitter. I could just make a WordPress that updates really quick, and that would be Twitter. So, and I would, I could do it so I would only lose like $50 million a year doing that. I'm sure. Well, one of the things is as well, is my feed at this point, I've been on Twitter since 2009, and we mostly discuss Twitter here. Facebook used to, back then, used to have one friend, or at least I did, who was the professional social media person. And everything they did, every fart they made that was professional, they had to post. It's like, I'm here at the place with the thing. Here's me doing the work. Or the worst ones are the ones where they pretend to be real people. It's like, just another day at the office. And it's like them with like a perfectly placed cup of coffee that doesn't have any dripping down the side like every other pe- cup of coffee. And they've got like one opened but unchewed kind bar. You know, I'm sick of these perfect people talking about like, oh, here's my perfect day in the office. And like they don't have a black eye. Uh, they, they, <laughs> they, there's no HR complaint memos on the desk. Uh, their one nutsack, one ball isn't hanging out of their zipper. Like anyone is like this. But no, I, uh, I, I, I've, I like look at those people out of morbid curiosity very often. And uh, my favorite thing is when they like check in, they use Foursquare to check in, but they'll check into CVS and they'll be like, uh, you, you never know where Band-Aids are when you actually need them. And it's like, oh my dude, kill yourself. <laughs> Why the fuck are you doing and this you to do yourself? you know where they are. They're in fucking CVS. <laughs> yeah. yeah, just like They're right every there. mundane moment is is hyper hashtagged and hashtags are interesting because i feel like for some people the way that they use hashtags it immediately tells you that they're old as fuck because like they'll say something like um watching cnn looking at my future but the rest of hashtag my hashtag daughter lifetime and and then like hashtag, hashtag my then, like, family. Hashtag family hashtag gender hashtag <laughs> Like CNN, and you're like, dude, you're fucking old. You are fucking old if you do. Like, how do you think hashtags work? Like, you're gonna go, like, you're, someone's gonna be clicking on the daughter hashtag and be like, oh, I see you also have a daughter. I would like to connect with you on, in a social setting to talk about daughters. What's up with daughters today? What's the deal with those? They inspire <laughs> us. But uh, the, the, the other way that people do them is when they're really young and they'll just like hashtag, just like not a complete joke. But that's also like they're also doing it wrong because it's like no one's gonna no one's clicking on like barista problems. But the way that these sociopaths do it, they're doing it to optimize engagement, which also doesn't mean anything because there's no no one has ever made money because someone clicked on a hashtag. Like that doesn't generate money for companies. 
it may generate money for individuals if, like I said, a mogul sees you harassing people and is like, would you like to do that professionally? That's the only way. And and that's the amazing thing for me. My One of my favorite things to watch, though, for, with hashtags is there are people who have hashtag conversations, and those people are some of my favorites. My most favorite being the the PRSA, which is the Public Relations Society of America, also known as a large group of people who don't care about being good or policing themselves. And they love to have their PRSA chat and their MPPRSA, which means like new piss, piss, rape, sex, ass, something to do with public relations. And they get on there and they have these fantastically banal and empty worded conversations. Like, like these answers to these questions are so empty. They are devoid of actual things. And these people spend their lives looking at them. Like my favorite answer, there was one where the question was, one of these things was to do with local news. What are the differences between pitching the local media and national media response? And it's always Q4, blah, 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 A4. This is this guy's answer. Pitching local media requires a local tie, which is sometimes easier said than done. Well, okay. I mean, I, I have a lot of thoughts of this. I have a lot of experience in the PR industry. I took the I I took a PR certification test that Ed had oh, me Christ. take, and I purposely did not do any research, and I passed. So I'm as good as any of these guys. And like when you're you're pitching local media, the first thing you want to do, you got to make sure you're talking to local media. Number two, <laughs> don't forget what you're pitching them about. Number three. Do not say that you want to fuck the reporter. Like, don't say it to them. <laughs> like, I see people make this mistake a lot where they get horny. And that's those yeah. are the essentials. And I would like you to direct me to the hashtag so I could give my input. <laughs> what I love, though, is this got three likes of people. So it's like, okay, I need to, to pitch local media. I need to have a local something to do with the locality. So, you know, like the very fucking basics of reality, not even professional living. Just reality. Just, it's like, to have a burger, make a burger. It, that's it. And there are people, three people liked it, so they're clearly like, oh yeah, that's a really good do point. Do you ever do that, like, look at who liked one of these things and be like, wow, what the fuck is your life like? Like, you're even worse than the person who made this tweet, because you, you, you went, I agree. Like, keep, I want to encourage the guy who's doing this to keep doing this. And I really love them. I love all of these chats in any of them, because... I like to, sometimes I read it, I'm just like, okay, these people are devoid of actual life experience, professional experience, the ability to discern right from wrong, to like somehow resisting the urge to jump out a window every day. I don't know. Congratulations. They're still alive. And I, I just, I always like to think as well, like maybe they're all in on it and it's just the most depressing it's like a it's like a play unfolding in front of you like all of these people are lying to themselves um yeah i mean like i think it would be depress it would be like a play in that it is depressing in that plays are depressing because what is a play but a movie that just, it didn't make it but it is i think it is that like they are all deluding themselves like they are all like dude you just fucking slap this hashtag on you're going to see your engagement go nuts and uh, <laughs> like that's the way to do it. Have you ever seen a friend get a job in social media and just change? No, none of my friends have jobs. Well, some of them do. One of my friends has a job where she does things with social media. And I'm trying to think about ways that she has changed. Um, not real. I mean, I think have I... Hmm. They gave someone gave Nick Mullen a job to tweet professionally for like a company, and that just didn't last. What did he do? I don't oh, know God. what he did. Nick I don't Mullen. know if it was like that bad. <laughs> I mean, it it's could like it hostess could, hostess's first come related. It could have gone really sideways. I hope he was doing it. I hope he was doing it for like five WPR. <laughs> <laughs> I want to come on Putin, but uh, no, I mean. Uh, most of my friends, like, they're either other writers or they have office jobs. Uh, I don't know if I would be friends with the personality type who would just, like, get and keep a social media job. 
I don't know if I know anyone that competent or that fungible of a personality where they immediately become a hashtag person. Well, and that's and that's the great thing, though. It doesn't just need to be hashtags. You get people who they're famous, and that doesn't mean they're actually famous. They are internet famous. We talk about we talk about how that we have I have I have forty eight thousand followers or something stupid like that. I don't know. I'm sorry, everyone. I'm just yeah, I have sorry. Some of them. But you get these. Get yeah, sure. Take 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 my followers, <laughs> please. But <laughs> and. It's amazing, though, these people who, because they've reached a certain stage in their life where they think they're famous enough or they're smart enough because of their fame, that they can talk about anything. Anything. No, yeah, it is. I mean, usually online when you see the words, uh, not an expert on X, but... Usually tears follow, but this doesn't, this, this does not really stop people. I mean, in fact, it seems to encourage them. I think people are like more willing to go outside of their, their wheelhouse than ever. I was talking about the website Vox with uh, Virgil Texas the other day because little, just want to do a little promotion here. We are starting the Carl Diggler podcast and we were working on that. And we were talking about this guy who writes for Vox. His name is Dr. Vox. Well, that's not really his name. His name is David Roberts, so he puts Dr. Vox. But I was like, no, your name is Dr. Vox. And Dr. Vox is, like, supposedly a climate writer. But all his articles are like, uh, oh, I was a Gen Xer. Here's what I think about feminism. <laughs> he just, like, gets yelled at for all his articles. Because, like, no, he doesn't, like, he has no idea what he's talking about with anything. He's just completely out of his element. And his, his response is always like, I don't know why I even fucking try. And it's like, no, I don't know. I actually don't I love know him. why you I've never met him. I don't know why you thought the world would be better if you offered your opinion. And this fellow just, I just went to learn about him just so I could keep up. He is a Seattleite transplanted from Tennessee, now blogging for Vox.com about energy politics. Yet yeah, his last few articles, Game of Thrones, Battle of the Bastards settles it. Jon Snow is an idiot. That's not climate. Is that climate? Did 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 makes me hot under the collar because Game of Thrones is the only thing that makes living worth it for me. Yeah, it's a really good TV show. I don't want, like, some fucking lanyard dick to be like, mm, I mean, I mean, look at the pincer movement. <laughs> also, like, you don't, like, Dr. Vox doesn't know anything about military strategy. You didn't, you didn't go to West Point to learn how to blog. Like, you're supposed to be a climate scientist, and now you're like, oh, I'm not a medieval warfare expert, but uh, here's my opinion. About the fictional TV show and the military tactics. Well, let me just pick one random part because this is the... I'm so glad you introduced me to this person because it, this is exactly the guy. Because it doesn't need to be a business person or a tech person. I know I get down that path too easily. So whoever this... This guy who looks like he's like an assistant manager in a safe way. Like, he's... The, just this quote. This is from the um, the opus... After seasons of drift, Game of Thrones is now hurtling forward a little too fast. David Roberts. And for some reason, his article begins, David Roberts. Bolded. Because they, because uh, they want to be like, this is not the opinion of Vox.com or General Electric or any of our other sponsors. This is Dr. Vox. Yeah, well, the, the quote that definitely shores up that thing, because Christ, I wouldn't want to be tied to this person is the show's sudden acceleration has become vertiginous fucking hell oh my god <laughs> why <laughs> just fucking, why are you doing this why david rethink why are you this doing do this? better like, and and guess what though but wait there's more this fellow as well elon musk thinks we all live in a video game so what if we do if the answer cannot matter the question must be meaningless congratulations you wrote a Headline and a subhead that said we shouldn't read your article. That's exact. I mean, like, I agree with him. We shouldn't. <laughs> yeah. But, like. Yeah, we well, definitely should. But he did, like, he did it. What we're talking about here is kind of, like, on Twitter. And, like, yes, we could use every article that Dr. Fox has written for the last four years as an example. And every article on Fox. Right, like, just as an example of someone who doesn't know what they're talking about, who insists on knowing, like, just weighing in. But I thought about Dr. Vox, and we were talking about Dr. Vox earlier this week, me and Virgil, because 
Last week he did a tweet storm, and like when I hear the words tweet storm, I think good shit imminent. And uh, <laughs> this one was no different. Wake of the Orlando shooting. Tensions high. Emotions oh, high. Families have lost their loved ones. 50 people dead. Racial terror and uh, animus stoked as right wing demagogues rise across the world. Mm -hmm. Dr. Vox steps to his computer. <laughs> and he says, You know, I don't agree with sexism or racism, but I get why they exist because some people who are that way, they interact with either women or people of color. But I do not understand homophobia because there aren't that many gay people. <laughs> Wait, what? Dude, this is what he said. This is... I don't understand gay people because there he aren't that, that many. He said he doesn't understand homophobia because, like, most people don't interact with that many gay people. Uh, it means they don't like gay people. Yeah. Job done. You now understand. But, but like... It's when you're prejudiced against them. You're done. Like, he was just, he was just like, he was on a roll with this stuff. And I guess, like, no one loves him because no one was like, David, stop it. Like, don't, don't <laughs> you're supposed to be a climate writer and you're, like, ham-fistedly trying to explain homophobia. Well, also, like, being like, oh, I'm, I'm a Gen Xer, but I like feminism. But, it uh, like, the, info the whole thing, unfortunately, got cut short when he was going on a spiel about feminism and how he's feminist. And Olivia Nuzzi went... Hey, David, remember when you called me a hoe bag two years ago? <laughs> oh. And that just, that just sort of oh. ended. That just sort of took, took, the, took the air out of Dr. Vox's balloon. But... And put, and put the blood through his pants. <laughs> yeah. Because a woman talked to him. Dude, fucking... His, his, uh, his netbook just flung off his lap that moment. But <laughs> uh, this is We Wish that most of these exercises in I'm not an expert, but could end in a similar way. It could end with horrific public embarrassment and a declaration. I won't even fucking try again, but they won't. People Good. will still keep doing them. And no one and show favorite and my, my uncle, Benedict <laughs> Evans, my father, Benedict, <laughs> my, my real dad, shit, Harry Potter, Benedict Evans. Now, as we well know, the the Brexit happened yesterday, and I I was I was pro Remain, and Benedict Evans is one of my favourites in just in existence because it is so rare to find someone so prolifically wrong and consistently stupid who is actually smart, and he's not a stupid guy. That's what makes it funny. So yesterday during the the fall apart of the of the EU and. I bet Jason Calacanis said some great ideas too, but I actually don't want to die today, so I'm not going to read them. But yesterday, holy shit, did Benedict Devens go off on one. He's like, the history of EU referendums show us that they always produce what the electorates voted for on the results and never finessed. So that is a sarcasm, just so you understand, Felix. I know it's difficult to notice it. Oh, well, I mean, I did not know that Benny was getting into the satire business, but... Uh... <laughs> tugging my collar a bit at the arrival of my new competitor. Uh, my bow tie actually spun when I read that. Too much coffee this morning. Uh, <laughs> I would be cool if he got yanked off stage by <laughs> by a fucking cane every time he tweeted. <laughs> Do you think that happens at Andres and Horowitz yes, meetings? that's why like, they hired uh, him. <laughs> Like, just, like, when, when things are getting a little too heated between Mark Andreessen and whoever else is there. Like, like the, the other people who, who I don't know, you know fucking sit around at the table and spend other people's money. You the fucking Ted Silicon, Ronnie Tech, all the guys. I know all the guys. Well, you know what? It's off Twitter, but... Horowitz himself, and I actually don't have any problem with specifically Mark Andreessen and Horowitz, except... Well, okay, I have these other problems, but I won't get to them. Horowitz's book, I managed to get to the beginning of the second chapter after the opening chapter all about his terrible growing up quite poor and it was, like, very overwrought. But still, like, wow, okay, this is a very honest thing. Second chapter begins with a DMX quote. I mean, yeah, no, I mean, like, DMX, who wrote multiple hit songs that featured... 
very explicit references to fucking another man in prison to establish dominance. I think Mar- I think Horowitz. Yeah. I think Anderson Hor- Horowitz. It's the same thing. Yeah, it's but getting back to hypocrisy and of course Harry Potter. Benedict Devins is he. If you go through his tweets, you go way back in the way back machine that is his wonderful account. He has never liked the EU. The NSA spying on the EU Parliament reminds me of the story that KGB subscribed to the Village Voice to get insight into rural America. Just one, just one quote. Skip to last night. And what does Benny have to say? Well, let's find out. UK attitude to EU is an outlier, but even in France, two-thirds don't want more integration. So you know what? It's not Britain's fault, everyone. It's not their fault. And also the EU is good, and you should stay. His tweets were all, all about how good the EU was and how bad it was we left. But if you went actually by what he said in the past... He seemed pretty against it. And this happens a lot. People don't expect anyone to go back in people's timelines. So these very brainy yet gormless people go on these rants and then don't expect anyone to go like like Olivia did and saying, hey, remember the time when you just said the opposite of this? I mean, uh, you know, you you see it like Neera Tandon, uh, the uh, director for the Center for American Progress and an integral player in the Hillary Clinton campaign, Someone today, they found like all her tweets where she was talking about how we need a $15 minimum wage, pressuring people for it, talking about how important it is. On video today at the uh, Democratic committee, uh, committee platform voting hearing, voting down $15 minimum wage as a, pres- as a plank. Uh. <laughs> hey, people, Neera Tandon, by the way, did a fucking awesome series of tweets uh, that started with, I'm not an Olivia expert. But I feel like we should do something. Uh, a few months later, this Libya thing doesn't seem to be going well. She's fucking amazing. She's gonna have like a really important position in the Clinton administration, and she's just every like. But like on Twitter, she's like fucking Joe Bluth. I can't wait. <laughs> like that's gonna be fucking awesome when Neera Tandon is in charge of like airstrikes in the North African theater or whatever fucking job they assigned to her. And she's still tweeting. I'm loving that as well, though, because this election's been great for bringing in my side and your side. So your for your political writers and my tech writers and watching them just, oh, God, neither should be talking or interacting. I don't believe in any racial segregation, but po- like the politics and the tech people should not talk when it comes to the journalism. Unless, like, both sides agree to read. And it's very rare that someone in politics actually gets something wrong about tech within the writing side of it. And when they do, every tech writer is like, yeah, well, actually, Politico, you're incorrect. And then Politico hired some all right tech people. I mean, like, look, there's a lot to to screw up. Like, uh, I'm not one of those people. I write about politics. I know all about tech. It's like, got to have your apps. Got (laughs) to... computers in cords you got to have like two or three kinds of those depending on whether you've got a apple or the other kind and uh ted talk is when they unveil the new iphone yep nailed it and it's great but what's great uh, is watching when something like the brexit happens and you've got we we've the amazing thing with my the people i follow now is it's just a complete mess of people that felix knows that I read from all over. No celebrities. Don't bother with celebrities for the most part. And, oh my God, have I watched people go from like, oh, so sorry for Britain. At least eight people straight up just be like, I can't believe Britain's leaving Europe. Um, I, I don't like, you know, uh, the Brexit thing was in, like, look, I'm going to admit, I don't fucking know a lot about UK politics. Nigel Farage seems to be like a functional alcoholic. Boris Johnson seems like he does whippets. Uh, David Cameron seems like the dumbest motherfucker alive, which I always assumed about him and it turned out to be right. But and yeah, no, I was tweeting all night because I was avoiding doing things. So like now who looks like the fool for criticizing me? I actually had a reason. But uh, anyway, I uh, yeah, I I tried to stay within my area of what I knew about. I, uh, 
but like, man, was it fun to watch. It was fun to watch like the people who look at the stock market once every eight months and they see like pre-market trading is down and they're like, all right, uh, another recession starting tomorrow. <laughs> this is the big one, folks. Yeah. This is it. This is when we this is the this is when we all go down. You thought it was bad in 2008. Yeah, no. And like, I'm not saying that there's like no like there's no fucking uh there's no economic consequence of this. There will be huge economic consequences of this, but like to just immediately be like, we're in a recession, like starting now because of free market trading. Like that's, that's a wrong. You don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Like, okay. So the Dow dropped about four and a half points. That doesn't precipitate a loss in an equity market off of record highs. Does not immediately mean we're in a recession. That has to do with quarter to quarter growth. I still remember that. But um, it's also yeah. like incredibly fucking irresponsible if you think about it. Yeah. It's literally what moves the market. It's crazy people yelling things. And what's been wonderful is watching. And I obviously have a very, very strong opinion on this being British, born in England, still a British citizen. I got to watch what happens when people who are a mixture of tech writers, politics writers, business people, random people I know from my life swing from the beautiful thing of, oh, this is bad for Britain, the eight people who truly think leaving the EU means leaving Europe, which it is not, and those people are amazing and I love you so much for your ignorance. But then now they've moved straight into the smug fucking, no matter whether what they do, they've moved straight into the smug asshole routine, like, <laughs> no, we're not the dumb ones. Well, that's the reaction you're having. It's not well, you know what? Fuck. Now we've got two countries that don't look great, that are a very big part of the world. It's, <laughs> Britain looks dumb now. Maybe Trump isn't so bad. Maybe Trump. Yeah, no, I mean, that's like, that's like the fucking, what we actually have is like the consequences of both years of the UK media stoking immigration fears and nativist, nativist uh, desires and the consequences of the horribly run EU austerity program that people just fucking hated and the crushing austerity of the Cameron government. Uh, w in, in conjunction with that, we have the rise of a very violent nativist racial, racially demagogic right all over Europe and in, in America. And the reaction from people is like, uh, is, uh yeah, uh, <laughs> Oh, yeah, well, I used to watch uh, the first episode of the newsroom where Jeff Newsman talks about uh, how bad America is, but now that's Britain. I actually wonder if the fake Will McAvoy account had anything to say about this, and I really hope he did. He definitely did. He definitely like, did. There's no fucking way that anything happened, and the guy who plays pretend as the fucking TV newsman is like, I don't know, I don't know if I should offer my take. He offers his take about, like, everything. After every killing, he, like, that's the most fucking obscene thing, is after every killing, he, like, pretends like he's on the news and offers condolences. And he is, whoever this guy is, I kind of love him. So, if you are not aware of either the relatively boring and meh show, the newsroom that I think it's was cancelled. It it's a fucking, it's... Was it good? No. <laughs> Oh, oh, sorry. You mean, yeah. Oh, I've seen every it. episode. This is like a family tradition. Me and my family, uh, whenever, like at the end of the year, when we were together in Chicago, we watch every episode of the newsroom. You, you have quaaludes and then you all You feel like you have quaaludes because like every time, like oh, it's, it's, the show is fucking awesome because it's like, they, it's just like unbridled sexism. Like, like every, oh, every time brilliant. that a woman... Like, the women are just, like, straw men, but, like, for women. Just, like, women in general. <laughs> like, like wow. this will come in and be like, I think the news should be a, should be a selfie of my boobs. And Jack <laughs> Newsman goes, listen, you cunt. <laughs> like, it's, it's so good. Well, don't worry, he did step in. I checked, listeners. So this is... This is a show about Jeff Newsman, Jeff William the Bill. Jeff Typewriter Newsman, that's his name. So, someone, I think when the show got shut down, whoever it was who ran it dropped the account and some horrible moron picked it up who has been role-playing as Will McAvoy from the show ever since. 
And his tweet from last night, you were on your own. Awesome. Wow. Do you have a clue what happens now? Well, that is like, that is the firm voice of Jeff, the typewriter newsman. I don't know why they're calling him Will McAvoy. That may be just be like a nickname yeah. the fans of the show gave him. But, uh, no, that's fucking incisive commentary. I love that, dude. I love that when like media people, they're like animals. And like, I don't think half of them understood <laughs> what was happening last night, but they just, they just saw other people be like, well, this is bad. And they did like the thing that they always do, which is quote, tweet each other and go, welp. And then the hashtag breaks it or like, just talk about getting blackout drunk because they're all functional alcoholics. Like they're all just doling their internal misery with alcohol, but they think it's funny and cute. Well, Enrique Iglesias' brother, Matthew Iglesias, had this to say. The best thing about anti-elitist posturing is that multimillionaires, TV hosts, celebrities, and powerful politicians can all get in on it. Yeah, isn't he yeah, no, one you're of, one of those isn't people. He one of the like, you don't know any. Like, Matt Iglesias went to Harvard for philosophy and he just somehow dicked around and ended up writing about economics where he also he like just doesn't know anything. And it makes sense because philosophy, like working out, like it's a masturbatory thing. It's an ego exercise. You can it can make you a more complete person, but it's just it's sort of like a fucking worthless thing to know about. It's just there's no real utility to it. It's it's a completely masturbatory exercise. But like anyway, Matt just like decided that he knew about economics somewhere around the way, and he writes article. Like he wrote this article out that was like, um, different countries have different safety standards, and that's okay. And this was, I think, immediately after a garment factory in Malaysia collapsed and over a thousand people died. Oh and it was God. like, this is offensive. Not not even because you're like trying to be like a, a harsh pragmatist, but like you don't know anything. Like you're not good at this. And that's what amazes me, because he is a political writer or an economist, or he thinks those two things are combined, and he will say random things, and he's one of the many people on Twitter, these people who have got some veil of, they think they're responsible for telling people what's up, but then they occasionally drop in the world's worst jokes, such as Obama needs to arm Boris Johnson's moderate rebel faction to prevent Nigel Farage's radicals from taking over. That may be a joke. I have no idea. It's a joke. Like, people always do this where they're like, oh, we need to arm the moderates. Uh, like, it's a silly joke. But, like, forgetting that they also, like, they seriously advocated this in Syria. And then it turned out, like, all the guns went to Al-Qaeda and ISIS. Just, like, a funny, funny screw-up. Funny, like, it's, you can see, you can see, like, uh -huh. Mr. Dean doing it. What? <laughs> oh, oh, uh -oh. Uh oh, Fallujah belongs to ISIS. Uh -oh. Whoops. Teddy, oh, Teddy, I've I've armed oh, ISIS. The, I'm sorry, oh, Teddy. All white women are in cages. <laughs> Whoops. I'm now, I'm now. What well, I described the whole thing that happened. Yes, there's an, an Armando Iannucci thing, but it really <laughs> there is a degree of these people. And what? And I think we've we're onto something, or at least I'm guessing that we might be where there is a problem of the blurred lines. I'm not referring to Robin Thicke, of course where they don't fucking know where their lane is, so they kind of make it up. So, Enrique Iglesias here, he doesn't actually know what he does, if you read his tweets. Global economic chaos is good for web traffic, but bad for ad revenue. Okay, that's on topic. Okay, three tweets about fucking... And, and he actually begins it with, Tweet storm! With an exclamation oh, mark. Yeah, good, good shit. Rather than policies... <laughs> Good shit attack. Rather than the policies that lead to this outcome, politicians in London and Berlin and Brussels need different policies. Fucking hell. No, really? wait, no, wait, wait. You're saying that they're like two different places? And they need different policies. Oh my God. This is why this is why he makes a bit this is why Vox got like that big general electric sponsorship. A because of Dr. Vox. They were like, Dr. Vox, we like your tweet storms. Here's a billion dollars. And B, because of this, like, you just, you can't get these takes anywhere else. Uh, you can, you can go right onto Josh Sabaro's page. Well, he's actually, like, he's great, like, he's more courageous, like, his takes are shittier. Like, I would say he works harder for them because he's never worked hard at anything in his life, because he would, he would be, like, the commoner that he fucking despises if his dad wasn't a famous economist. But, like, he does, he does put some, like, a little mental energy 
into just making the worst, shittiest takes about things. And Brexit was no different for Josh. Josh uh, used this opportunity to uh, say that, frankly, folks, there's too, too much democracy and the elites. We got to trust the elites. And what better case for trusting the elites than the multi-decade-long uh, manipulation of the British public by elites to stoke their nationalist fury, uh, David Cameron's massive fuck-up, David Casey, wouldn't David Cameron just be like the poster boy for elites? He's an inbred shithead who only gets to who only got to be prime minister because of he came from a long line of other people who fucked their cousins but did it with titles in front of their names. Like, isn't that exactly what David Cameron? That's exactly what Josh Barrow wants is a bunch of David Camerons. And wow, it turns out he's a fucking idiot. He's like Jeb Bush. Like all these, it turns out that all these people are the same. It turns out that they're all just guileless morons who they would work hard, but they, it's not that they're lazy. They don't know how to work hard because they've never done it in their life. And so on the end of least consequence, they end up like Josh Barrow where they just like write shitty articles or on the highest end, they end up like David Cameron and just fuck everybody. Yeah. And He's, but the problem is he's not the only one. And whenever something happens, and we discussed this last episode, where it's like, everyone's got to have a take. But there was something special about the Brexit. Because genuinely, and include me in this, go and ask someone on the street in England, what did the EU or does the EU do for each country? Other than let you go between places. Choose, give me three. Give me three. And I don't know if I could even pick out three right now. But don't worry. Johnny fucking son had something to say. Every fucking person on my feed had something to say. And you got to watch this wonderful thing. And this is the scumbag. So we're talking about the shittiest parts of the internet. We got to watch. And this is personally offensive. You got to watch the, not even the, the, the so-called irony bros. Which is my new favorite term for Felix and his friends. But it was like te- random tech writer someone from Gizmodo, I believe, who did, like... And, like, 18 people did this joke that I saw. It was like, here are the results of uh, Turpington on Bump, Fluppington on Cough... Oh, no, it was like, tea, tea Kettle on Dipshit. It's like, oh, fuck off. And these people, you got to see them... There were some who started at the beginning, but now we've gone throughout the last 12, 18 hours into this amazing nadir of just sneering nastiness and despondent like just whining about like oh god the whole whole economy's going i don't really understand what the economy is or where england is or what the eu did or anything but don't worry i have an opinion and everyone is just fucking going off it's like well that's a oh the the eu well now that now all is bad and there are occasionally like some touching stories but there's so many fuck if i see one more fucking so-called expert in something someone some fucking person like i don't know ken vogel from politico i think did one where it was like fake hashtags or something it was britain's hashtags uh here it is scotland we are hashtag we are fucked we are fucked we're so fucked we're so fucked david cameron old white people it's like oh jesus christ you are actually damaging the world with your tweets you've congratulations you had an effect you actually hurting people. I mean, like, um, I think there's nothing more annoying than when these people try to do jokes. Like, when the fucking political <laughs> writers try to do jokes. Because, I mean, what what is all comedy, but it's uh, observing the pain and misery of the of the world. I mean, that's what irony is. That's why I like, uh, irony is my per- preferred comedic form, because it's a reaction to the pain and absurdity of the world. And it's a reflection of the nonsense of modern existence in many ways. But you, these people, they have gotten to where they are by not being reflective or, or considerate people in anything. So when they try jokes, it's just, it's, you know, it's like when a dog tries to open a door. They know that they hit something <laughs> that's up there and something moves, but they don't really they don't really know unless it's like a smarter dog, unless it's like a Portuguese water dog or something of that nature. But so they're just like repeating joke rhythms and algorithms that they saw other people do. And people will like it 
because they just like live in a community where everyone's mouth is up everyone's asshole and they're all sucking each other's shit out of their assholes and they just tell each other that what they're doing is good but it just like it's like where's the joke in the, like w- uh, hashtag we are fucked like what what the f- what, what is that that like wouldn't that wouldn't even be like permitted on Newgrounds in 2003 and that's where i get my news now you new newground has new new grounds has a better serious action than Politico and Daily Beast. Really <laughs> and, thought and Vox. really thought provoking flash animations. I would honestly love it if Ebaum's World actually became the leading news site. And at this rate we might actually get there. I mean like I if they really wanted to, it wouldn't be that hard. <laughs> and and it's just it's fantastic as well. And I don't want to drag us too far down the tech hole. But the tech people are brilliant. They're fucking great. They are so selfish and so self-absorbed. They're like, wait, wait, guys, what's what's the effect on tech here? Nothing. Nothing is the answer. Now, someone then wrote a blog who I won't hate on because I used to work for him and I actually liked the blog and he wasn't wrong, where it was basically nothing for like two years, which is the actual answer. And then just, but no comment on the fact that, guys, who gives a shit about your startups? We have a situation that could change the fabric of many millions of people's lives, of which tech is not a part of it. Same same way that none of these political writers are part of it as well. Yeah, um, no, yeah, like, they, I mean, they do what all, like, shitty, incomplete people do, where they can't just, like, they can't accept an event for what it is. Yeah. And, like, if you're, if you're the writer, <laughs> just, like, asking into the void, like, What's the effect on tech? Well, like, maybe you should have, like, if you are the writer, if you're the tech guy, or if you are whatever Benedict Evans does. I don't know. I don't think he knows. Uh, like, maybe you should have looked into this before all this happened. And the be- the best thing is, though, it's like, you've got... And you've if you watch the news today, if you read the news today, there's so many companies that are 100% saying that they are going to leave, the e- they're going to leave Britain... Just to get articles. Like, I've seen four separate articles saying, well, my company's going to leave England because the Brexit happened. Really? No reason, no actual explanation, just saying the economic climate is different now. Right, no, right. That's like... They own. They own. They are just, they are human scabs. Because you know those fucks aren't going to go anywhere. They are not going to change their lives. They are not going to change anything. They are pro- And there were like three separate pieces that said, oh yeah, I heard companies having emergency meetings. Unless you are a financial company, then I'd understand. If you are just like Turdly, the fucking customer relationship manager for people's stool samples, then you don't need to take them. You don't need a fucking fucking DEFCON 5 meeting to talk about how Turtley's gonna keep measuring turds. Most likely, nothing will change. I mean, like, for one, the UK didn't, they never adopted the euro. (laughs) They were, like, they were, they weren't really, they weren't in the eurozone. There was a lot of, like, yeah, some things are gonna get fucked up, some things aren't. That's about the extent of my expertise. I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't, like, I forgot everything I knew in economics. But, like, yeah, no, this is we see this with every every fucking thing that happens. It's like a way for companies to get in the news. They're the same they're the same as like the radio DJs from The Simpsons who talk about the clowns in Congress. Yeah, and the worst thing is they're all they're all subscribing to this idea of personal branding. And I used to think this was only part of my industry until I heard a friend of mine that was a management consultant say it, I was like, oh God, no, please don't make this a thing now. Nope, I heard someone say it who was in, I think they were like a personal trainer, like a personal trainer talking about their personal brand. I was like, oh, fucking ca- fucking hell. No one, I think anyone who thinks about, thinks about cultivating their personal brand, they do not get one. They just become like a fucking mishmash of hashtags and shit. Because like, like, it, if you think about it, it's, like, really perverse. I mean, these people put so much stock into their into their uh, hyper-anesthetic marketing image. And they, they, they think about that part of the world so much that this it is, they're basically saying, like, I want to create my personality. 
And like, it's not going to, it's like not going to happen. Like you, there's nothing differentiating you, you from anyone else. Like at all. Like I could just, I could, if I like right now put in the hashtag influencer, I will not be able to tell the difference between one person or the other because they're like the same to any normal person. These are all the same asshole, but they're all doing it. I think that like Kenneth Vogel or whoever, just pick random person who writes about, but Matty, Enrique Inglés. I mean, he is a personal, uh, he, he they is are. a personal brand. He's like the fucking wrong burrito. He's like the burrito guy who's wrong. <laughs> like that is, that is immediately <laughs> what I think about him. Like, A, this guy wrote a lot of articles about Chipotle in 2013. I don't know why. And like two, I usually see him because he's wrong, but like, okay, that's like a distinct identity. <sighs> and it depresses me because you know, I wouldn't say Josh Sabara does it. I think he go. He definitely just doubles down on whatever the fuck is. Just he's just he has sold his soul. Well, maybe not that bad, but he's definitely gone down the hole where he's just like fuck it. I don't care. But I definitely think that there are, and personal branding is not necessarily sitting down and saying, oh, I'm going to brand myself like this. But there is a consideration behind every tweet, and it has to be in a certain line, and it has to be in a certain format. Yeah, no, I'm, like, that, that is just, that is the darkest shit in the world, and if you think about it, it's, you know, it, it's almost like a rejected Orwell story. Like, it's, it's just sort of yeah. too shitty and too ridiculous, even after, it, it, it's like, it's like fan fiction for V for Vendetta, because it's, it's a cult of individualism, of prepackaged individualism, where no one is actually, you're not able to actually differentiate anybody from anyone. And it's incredible as well, because it is everywhere. So, because I have pretty bad brain damage myself, I did actually unblock Johnny Sun yesterday. And I thought I'd dig in just to see what horrible things he has said. But there is apparently, currently, one of the most horrifying wars going on at the moment. And I'm, of course, not referring to the multiple conflicts happening in the Middle East. I'm talking about Johnny Sun versus Fuck Jerry. I, okay, look, look. Uh, last year, David Petraeus, uh, the former Pentagon <laughs> head, got in a little bit, of, little bit of hot water because he said, I think we should arm Al-Qaeda to fight ISIS. And, you know, obviously people are like, David, this is a terrible idea. This sort of thinking gave us Al-Qaeda in the first place. David, you had to leave the military and intelligence because you got too horny and stupid. David, fuck off. David, we hate you. David, you got a lot of people killed. David, die. But. Right. But, okay, like, you do have to think like this sometimes. And in the situation of Johnny Sun versus Fuck Jerry, I back Al-Qaeda, Johnny Sun. <laughs> yeah. I, I, you, what, you mean you'd arm them against I him? I would give Johnny Sun a gun against this. Oh, you're calling him Al-Qaeda? Yeah. So is Fuck Jerry Fuck ISIS Jerry's in this absolutely case? Absolutely ISIS. He is both ISIS <laughs> in my metaphor, and he is probably a member of ISIS. <laughs> I don't know, but he probably is. <laughs> it, it, he's like, but he actually joined by screenshotting one of their their videos. And sorry, one of their one of their like promotional memes, taking the name of ISIS off the top. Putting it on he his stole feed. Tweets about his, <laughs> he stole tweets from ISIS. He stole, like, a, a, like a photograph of a, of a Mujahid from Dabiq, the ISIS magazine. Which, by the way, like, freelancers, they do pay 50 cents a word, Dabiq. Wait, is it real? No, they really have the, Well, like, Al-Qaeda had this magazine called Inspire, which I always thought was, like, a funny... Like, funny fucking name for an Al-Qaeda magazine. That sounds like an airline yeah. magazine. Or like a children's wow. magazine. Oh, too soon. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, everyone. I'm trying to but, remove it. Uh, oh, wow. Fuck it. I don't want to put the Al-Qaeda I... magazine on. <laughs> oh, oh, I didn't God. even... You, that one fucking flew over my head for a second. Oh, oh fuck. Dude. God damn it. <laughs> no this one's is absolutely this. No the one's worst thing. One. We've been we've no, fucked up gonna, badly. This is the one. This is the one that gets us put on the no fly list. <laughs> yeah. Everyone, but uh, the, <laughs> the, the, the someone will not be able to the read Inspire. Will do this in to, just to prevent, like, not even people on the no fly list. Just me and Ed from buying guns after this one. <laughs> but uh, no, like uh, he fuck Jerry took an like took a picture of a guy in a balaclava from the Beak, the ISIS magazine, 
and we, it was like he put like one of his captions. It was like when Bay lit AF. Who did yeah. this, fam? <laughs> Me. What? <laughs> Me. I pledged to ISIS. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, no, fuck charities and ISIS. I'm not saying this is a moral judgment. This isn't me trying to be, like, silly or, like, me trying to issue a moral condemnation on Fuck Jerry to be like, oh, he's so bad he's an ISIS. No, it's just, like, he is an ISIS. It is just a fact. And what he does with it, that's up to him. Like, if he wants to be constructive with it or I, not. But he is ISIS. But we, re- uh, we should probably talk about what he... what He he stole one of Johnny Sun's many great jokes, like, I am them brain disease, but I love beam, chair, beam, or some shit beam, like that. Beaming blah bib, bib is like when you are in a bark, bark, dark room and somebody, <laughs> but somebody is made out of flashlights. And what's great as well is the tweet he stole was so shit. It was a picture of the Democratic sitting. Funny you mentioned it. And it was, why these House Democrats look like they about to drop the most fire legislation of 2016. First of all, I don't believe they were trying to start, a le- they were trying to make sure a vote happened. Yeah, yeah, that right? is what they were trying. They were trying to make a vote happen on a really bad bill and like good, good job, good effort by them, by the Democrats. Uh, also, like great joke by Johnny. I did not know that it was 2014 again, and we're doing one of 2014's shittiest jokes. But like, yeah, more power to you. I hope that you are in Hamilton too. Uh, fuck Jerry! How dare you? How dare you? How dare you? <laughs> this this is. I would condemn this in the EU, but I'm not allowed yeah. in. I like I like it like this is sort of a conversation I like the tweet stealing conversation because like usually when tweets are stolen it's like it's just like a picture of Spongebob and the original tweet is like a picture like a screen cap from the show Spongebob and the caption is like uh yeah yeah when the whole team when the whole team here it's like a white person talking what they think black people sound like on the internet with a picture from a TV show and then, like, of course, another account takes it because it's that's not a distinct joke. Like, you didn't make that with a distinct voice. You just you sounded like every other asshole who has a personal who has a personal brand of like shitty comedy. But I remember when the fat Jew, that whole thing happened. Uh, somebody wrote an article on Medium about having her like shitty joke that was exactly like the one I just described, taken from the fat Jew, and she was like, "I feel violated." It's like what? Like- <laughs> You didn't actually get something taken from you. Like, you didn't... You know, people people whose home, like, they're displaced from their homes, like, they're violated. This is... No, you just... Like, you weren't even going to get anything from that joke. Like, these are all the... These are all the fucking assholes, by the way, who think that, like, you get a job writing for, like, Chris Hardwick or any TV show by being on Twitter, which you don't. You just get podcasts and harassment jobs, like me. Well, what I like about these jokes, like, this conversation as well was amazing. Because it was written with, like, the level of drama of fucking people debating Shakespeare and Marlowe. And, like, and it was, it was so brilliant and so beautiful. Because Johnny Sum did that joke that was, and I hate it as well. Like, if you break down the bits of comedy that make comedy great, intricate comedy can be done well in a sentence if... You get the facts right. You need the base facts right. So the fact that he said about to drop the most dope legislation or whatever, no, they weren't. That that he could have said drop the best vote, sit in any number of different words that actually meant the thing that he was talking about. But instead, he did this, and he's like, "Lol, fuck Jerry, you stole the tweet." And actually, I don't know, I'm not going to defend him, because I'm not going to defend either of them, I'd fucking just know. But Fuck Jerry actually credited him for this worthless fucking thing, and guess what? I would love it if that fucking photographer sued Johnny Sun, or was just like, take down my fucking Yeah, Johnny Sun did take someone else's photo that like, took considerably more effort than his tweet. Someone's actual journalistic effort. That's a good point, I didn't think about that. Okay, now both of them are ISIS. (laughs) <laughs> okay, great. No, no, but it's like isism. Uh, isism. Uh, how how come the talk theory, or no, they wouldn't be saying it. How come the apostates always talking about mm, the hadith, but mm, <laughs> can't 
recognize Tawid oneness with God. <laughs> That's the last this, this worthless. Said. And what's great is he goes in these big rants against fuck Jerry, who, to be fair, have responded in some of the most foul, cum laden ways. I mean, because he used the word cum a few times, so that's that's a fair amount of cum, I guess. But this is this is a dude who is arguing. And so take out any of the content here and just say if you took the level at which they were arguing and with the fire and with the thousands of people responding, being like, "Oh, fuck Jerry, you're so bad," you'd think they were talking about an academic paper that cured a disease. But no, it's tweets like, wow, the pound has really, and that's with one L, by the way, plummeted. And it's kilograms to pounds. And it's like, oh, fucking shoot me. Uh, Just straight up, just end my worthless life. Because you are not, you are not a real person. I mean, they talk about, like, fuck, I think fuck Jerry sucks because, like, he takes other people's shitty tweets and he's also, like, one of these guys who, like, hides the fact that he's 35 by applying a black and white filter to his face. And that's, like, that's just (laughs) dishonest. Uh, And he's also, like, one of these people who's, like, I can tell that his dad was probably either Joseph Goebbels or Himmler, like, one of the Nazis who had a weak (laughs) chin. But, like, every time he's on Twitter, he's like, hey, yo, fam, squad lit AF. And it's like, fuck you, you don't talk like that. Like, in real, like... Do you think he crosses the road when he sees... Yeah, no, absolutely. Anyone with any melanin, like, fuck Jerry, is immediately, like, fuck walking in the same direction as those people. But, so he's, like, and he's also, like, a... He's, like, an optimize your engagements type guy. So, like, he's, like, everything that's bad. Like, I wouldn't... I wouldn't, like, buy if he was, like, if the government suddenly was, like, we're executing fuck Jerry. I wouldn't, like, buy tickets to the execution, but, like, if I would watch an illegal stream. Um, yeah. I, 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 I'd watch the Periscope. Yeah. But I just, like, I hate him because he's him. Like, because he's, like, the yeah. type of guy he is. Whereas, like, I saw people talking about it, and they're like, this is the worst thing you could do is steal other people's, so, like, they were talking about him like he's a scab. Like, he's fucking people out of money. And it's like, no, he's not. Like, all of you are just, like, writing shitty jokes that are so derivative of each other. And, like, a joke that someone did four years ago that, like, you might as well be plagiarizing. It doesn't really matter. The pound is weak joke is older than I am. It's so fucking old. It's so fucking old. It predates, like, the mass use of the internet. It predates the mass use of the telephone. Fucking, like, the moment they invented the pound sterling and knew that the dollar existed... Or just invented the pound stone. They said, oh, I dropped a pound. And it was like a pound weight. And like, I don't know who fucking laughed. Like, that That's probably like I why guess. they called like, it the I, pound. I, I named the first old, olden times person at Joe Shakespeare. I know you do, a lot of Shakespeare references this episode. Uh, it's because it, it's it's because I had to think of the antithesis of fuck Jerry. Yeah, that's true. But we need a shit of the week. And I found one that you will Ooh. love. So, because we're talking about... We're talking about social media people, of course. Gary Vaynerchuk is someone we have discussed before. He looks like he... He he looks like if you hadn't heard him speak, he was someone who, like, demonstrates Kalashnikovs on YouTube, but they jam, like, one bullet in. And it's not (laughs) Max. It's like... And you just hear him fucking screaming in Russian as, like, the abused bear he owns walks around in the background. And this this wonderful guy. So it's Cannes, Cannes Lions this week, which is the time when all of the worst fucking people in the world, so social media, marketing, and PR people, and advertising people, get together and jack each other off. And like it's like Salem meets the human centipede. Sadly, does not meet a disaster film. But Gary Vaynerchuk, whose Twitter is literally only hashtags and videos of him oh, dude, yelling he's such social a piece media of shit. Advice. He's such a piece of shit that if you go to his Instagram, like half of them are just pictures of him sitting on benches. And the other half are like videos of him in, in, on a windy sidewalk being like, if you want something, you have to go out and do it. If you want to succeed, you have to succeed. Like he's one of those guys. And I kid you not. Six minutes ago, he tweeted a video that is stop complaining and go all in. Well, he did go all in on a fucking stupid idea. He did the equivalent of a no fat chicks Wednesday party invite. So he sent out an email and it and what I love is this article actually begins with 
Can Lions 2016 has its first truly cringeworthy moment? Stop you there, mate. No, no. The fact it exists was its first cringeworthy it's, it's moment. Like, I, ca- or I like can't when- believe somebody ruined Diarrhea Fest. <laughs> you really brought... The, like, Heil Hitler Fest is fucking ruined this year because someone said they'd sent, they would sent out in the form of a party invitation that they were seeking attractive females and models only. <laughs> Now, let's just say this for a... Let's just pause it there for a second. Every single party organizer ever is thinking this, but they don't want to say it. And you don't want to say it because it's, like, truly a disgusting thing. But they're all thing Like, if you're throwing a party at a large social media and marketing thing in fucking France, then you are definitely thinking, like, oh, hot chicks only, don't bring your fuck friends. It all is just adult frat parties for the worst humans. And so this this email went out and it was amazing. Thank you for interest in attending. Two exclamation marks. And this is all giant blue, like like light blue text. Please be aware this specific list is for attractive females and models only. So that's bold and underlined for attractive females and models only. Gentlemen may contact the PR departments of their respective sponsors. Holy shit, sex. Like that is for someone who is so fucking obsessed with their image, well, I don't think he sent or sends anything personally ever, but holy shit on a toilet, like, how stupid, like, how did this, how did this happen? Like, who? No, that is one of the dumbest fucking things I've ever heard of, and like, I mean, everyone's emails get leaked. Everyone's, everyone, we were talking about Nira Tannen earlier, Half the reason, like, people hate Nira Tandon is because the emails where she said really dumb things got leaked. And she's, like, she's fucking super powerful. Anyone's emails can get leaked, and no one is, no one is afraid of, like, very Gender, like, Vander, whatever. And... <laughs> Gender, Gender, Gender Gunt. Gunt. Yeah. <laughs> and he's, like... No, yeah, everyone will, like, like, any bad thing you say, people want to catch it, catch you for it. And especially something like this, like this is no fatties is sort of like the last, like people accepted that almost as like a joke thing, like that no one would be so stupid to put that anywhere. I love it as well, because his response was he did this, this video and he at, he at messaged it on Twitter, this 19 second video. And it is incredible. It is just, it's like a modified you know, I just found it so disgusting and I take full responsibility. Cindy, thank you so much. And I'm mortified. Um, listen, at the end of the day, when you're a CEO, any, any production teams or people you work with, you hire, it's your fault. So I'm really upset. I don't know the details yet, but I'll find out. And I appreciate you calling out the issue. And I wish you well. Thank you. You know what? Good apology, I guess. But on some level, I would fuck... I would be like... That is not quite a response that... It, it's sort of a sanguine, like, gross thing. I The appropriate response is, this is fucking disgusting. I, de- I find it deplorable. And anyone who got so much as a sniff of it ha- needs to look for a new job. That's a great response. But no. This is just... This, this is... But, but better yet... And... <laughs> In a subsequent video response to another party, Vaynerchuk said he is trying to get to the bottom of it. You know, just make that an email response, don't need a video. But Ben Lehrer of Thrillist, which is a company I didn't know was still around, got defensive and he said, Guys, this is promoter spam, would appreciate a little more credit. Dude, fucking fall on your sword there. Just say, like, we didn't know this was happening, but now we do, we're disgusting. Well, oh oh dear, disgusted is really what I mean there, but... I mean, like, great, look, like, the first thing you want to do when you're, when your promotion fucks up or, like, your company fucks up or you personally have fucked up is to respond to all of everyone on Twitter. Immediately. And using a very fucking shaky yeah, video no, don't, as well. Like, if you're thinking about writing something, don't, don't, don't. We need a shaky video where people can see your fucking anteater face and you stumble through sentences. <laughs> like, that's how you, like, people... Look, the mob wants blood. When the mob smells blood, they are going to swarm and try to kill you. And the only thing that will allay them 
is a video where you stumble through an approximation of words where you're like, the failure, the success, getting to the bottom of it. Like when they see that, they're like, "Oh no, this is okay." It's it, and they sent an internal email to explain it as well. An internal email that was so clearly for external purposes. But why? I don't understand these people. As I don't understand most people, there is this vaguely sociopathic thing where there is a really obvious thing to say here, which he kind of said, but still skirted around it, which is just. I'm really sorry, I had no part of this, but it is inherently disgusting. I truly didn't do anything to do with it, I did not know about it, and now I know about it, it's bad. Anyone that I have who supports it is not supported by me, and they are gone, and we're never working with this company again. Done. Everyone would be like, well this is shitty, but at least you took responsibility, and move the fuck on. But instead, this has been going on for days, just like the worthless diarrhea fest. I don't know, look, I mean, there's, well, what can you do in this situation? Uh, knowing this guy, he will say, like, I've always loved unattractive women or something. I don't know, he'll do uh. something. But, like, Gary, you can't stop Gary uh, Chunderdunk. You can't <laughs> stop him. Like, he's all about success, he's all about motivation. And you, you, like, you cannot stop a guy like that. And I believe in you, Gary. Gary, Gary Gunschunk. He is, he's brilliant. And I do, it was quite a sad day as well because I've never in my life watched one of his videos. So I did always think he had like a really deep. Oh, no, 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 he doesn't. I I am do social medias. You want, you want success. And actually, if you read his tweets, that they're they're actually kind of incredible. It's like, new daily V. Stop complaining and go all in. Like, if you read them like that with the vague threat to all of them, they're actually quite good, but sadly that's not the case. But do you have a shit of the week? I do. Felix? I do. I, I okay. So this is a very interesting shit of the week, and I am uh, something that a lot of you people never thought would happen is about to happen. All right. So you had sex earlier this week. Uh, there was an account in the United Arab Emirates called Old Gais. I don't know how to pronounce it. Uh, G A E S. Uh. It, he is a Salafist who lives in the United Arab Emirates who is finding atheists and agnostics in Kuwait and other Gulf countries where being discovered as an atheist or an agnostic is punishable by the death penalty. He was finding them and he was revealing their real names and informing police in these countries and in the UAE about them. Now, even in these cases where the government won't do anything, because this is a pretty common problem on Gulf Twi- on the Gulf State Twitter, actually. If their family finds out, they sometimes kill kill these people if, if, if it's a woman. Or they just make their life a living hell. They'll kick them out of the house. They'll do whatever. Um, I, like, I found out about it because of somebody I follow. Uh, Leventina, one underscore after that. Uh, you know, I don't speak Arabic, so I just sort of relied on other people's translations there. But I, you know, I was it was fucking horrifying to see because I, people have definitely died because of this this thing that happens on Twitter, and I put a big thing about this because you know we now people can get anyone suspended for just fucking anything, and I this guy was not getting suspended. He was getting people killed. He was not getting suspended, and. Someone, like, pinged a Neil Dash to it, and I've had some animus with a Neil Dash before, but, like, dude, holy shit, a Neil Dash, like, he contacted someone he knew higher up at Twitter to look at it, and someone who will talk at a shareholder meeting about it, and, like, that's, like, look, uh, that's fucking great, that's, this is a huge problem that faces, like, Gulf states, Twitter users in Gulf states who speak their mind at all because pretty much all this is either punishable by societally accepted practices or by capital punishment and Twitter should have a better handle on protecting these people's identities and uh yeah shit I want to say thank you to Neil Dash for that and that's and that's the crazy fucking thing as well and and this wraps back into what we're talking about as well earlier about the ultra serious serious people talking about their serious fucking jokes being stolen the drama 
around the situation you're discussing, where literally this guy tweeting and showing these accounts will get people brutally beaten or killed. The response by people, because it was the brown people in another country versus white people in one they recognize, was just complete and inconsequential. It was like, oh... Oh, it's all in the funny squiggly shit. I don't care. Whoa, 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 whoa. Fuck Jerry stole a fucking tweet. Yeah, no, I mean, it was... No, not today. It is sort of like bigotry, soft bigotry of low expectation. Like, oh, isn't that what those people do to each other anyway? This is, you know, this is a problem we have when we talk about Gulf states. Like, we sort of think that everyone who lives there is on board with this authoritarian program and not realizing these people are living under authoritarian despotic feudalism. And uh, we, we, you know, we just sort of assign these values to a lot of people. But uh, no, I mean, like, two, the, dude, there are people who fucking hate me who, like, retweeted my thing because they thought it was important. So, like, fucking credit to those people. Absolutely. Uh, but, yeah, no, it, it is funny to see, like, all the all the fave star guys, like, go after the fuck Jerry thing <laughs> with the kind of intensity that they did, like, knowing that this is around, like, that this exists on the same website, but... I'm gonna be honest, you actually went after it with less intensity than they did. I actually, I might have. They were like... <laughs> yeah. Well, not because you don't care enough, but these people care too much. They were like, straight up, this was... And it's brilliant as well, because... Well, it's not brilliant, it's truly awful, but we're on the scumbag. And these people went after it with such intensity, and it just occurred to me, they did it because... It threatens their way of life. It threatens their fucking horrible, circle-jerkian, mechanical nonsense jokes they do every fucking day. And Gary Vaynerchuk's Vayner Sports wine party is fucking important. And Jesus Christ, like, these people, for social media, for joke-making... They are so desperate for attention and self-validation that I retweeted multiple times. I unretweeted and retweeted across several days that shit when it happened. And you know what? I didn't see one fucking response from my feed. Yet when I see, like, people talking about the fat fucking Jew, and he's like, oh, he took a picture and said, what is this, fam? Crying emoji. They're like, well, this is, this is disgusting. This is morally deplorable. And I just don't, I don't get it. Is it a lack of understanding of the world? Is it just straight up, deep down racism? Like, not the quite, not quite at the top where they're thinking it, but it's just, they just don't care. I think it's, you know what I think it is? I think it's like chauvinism in a way. The fact that they talk about like fat Jew in this way, or like fuck Jerry. Like, again, I don't hate fuck Jerry for moral reasons. I hate him because of his identity as a person. Those are different things. Right. Uh, but, like, it, it's moral chauvinism because, like, if you really think about it, these guys aren't, like, immoral. They're amoral. Like, they're taking, like, shitty yeah. jokes that are just, like, sort of floating around that no one really made and, like, making money off of them. Is that, like, the most forthcoming way to make money? Nah, probably not. But, like, what? In this world, do you really think that's that bad in the grand scale of things? Like, really? All the awful shit people do? Like, but no... To cast it in these moral terms, like, no, Fat Jewish is one of the worst people on this website. No, he's not. Dude, no, he's not. There are fucking murder fu- murderers on Twitter who have verified check marks. You are saying your moral vision of the world is so narrow, and you put so much stock on, like, you know, like we talk about, like, these people fantasize about a producer finding them on Twitter to escape their lives because they hate their lives and they're not happy with how things turned out. Uh... That, like, they cast these in these terms. And, like, concurrently on the website, like, people's lives are being fucking ruined. Like, horrible, horrible, awful shit has happened. Like, I don't know how many people have died because of Twitter and Saudi Arabia or Kuwait. Probably a lot. I don't even want to fucking calculate that number. It's probably fucking horrifying. Uh, but to cast the to cast that in the same moral universe as this is deplorable is that is just, like... God, you have a, you're a, <laughs> you, you, you are a fucking ostrich sticking his head in the ground. I wish that would be great to live your life and like, that's what's horrible. That's how little you know I mean, yeah, about if, the rest if, of the world. Is, if your life is 
that good that the worst thing you've seen is what the fat Jewish or Jew... I, don't, I actually don't know his handle. I had no idea he exists until someone showed me some fucking article of him stealing some... Uh, it was like a Dis Disney princess is dressed as other Disney princess is dressed as members of fucking ISIS. I don't know what it was he posted, but like he posted something and that's when it all took off and they, they, it started this vague conversation about what is like content and that and it all and what really wraps this together as well is people just mostly don't care about shit unless it's immediately relevant to them and I mean borderline in front of their fucking face so they can't talk about the Brexit they can't talk about Saudi Arabia they can't think about them because they're like well I can only think about oh, my job and Twitter jokes if I, if I go a little, any further than that I might have an aneurysm yeah no I mean look I mean if you want to be narrow be narrow but these people I mean you kind of want to have your cake and eat it too like yes you saw me have a fucking multi-tweet meltdown where I said the guy who took my who did this fan picture is the shittiest person on Twitter and I hate them and I want to kill them like let's get serious. Like I want to get serious again and like tell you about the election. It's like no, no, you're a fucking ridiculous person and you're a child and I don't want to listen to you about anything. But because we are on Twitter, we will leave it to the professionals, and these are the professionals to professionally fuck up the world itself. And on that wonderfully happy note, we end episode four. And thank you again to our beautiful listeners for subscribing and downloading and sharing to their friends and not unsubscribing they will kill us and thank you so much felix biederman i'm ed zitron this has been the scumbag thank you everyone see you everybody